everyone and welcome to the retro channel recently i did an upgrade on the atari 65 xe to bring it up to 320k of ram normally they only have 64k that did involve using some 256 kilobit dram chips and while i was doing that upgrade i ran into a lot of issues and i wasn't sure if it was the ram or something else now i didn't have anything else to test that 256 kilobit dram in uh, if it was, say, 64 kilobit DRAM, I could easily throw it in the Ziff Commodore 64, and that's how I normally test 64 kilobit stuff. But being 256 kilobit, I didn't have anything else to test it with, and I couldn't tell if it was the DRAM or just something stupid that I'd done in uh, trying to do the upgrade. Now, I don't think I showed any of that in the actual video, but I did put it out to my patrons and one of them actually suggested that I should pick up a DRAM tester. Now, the one that they referred to is not actually the one that I ended up picking up, but that one did test 64 and 256 kilobit RAM chips, and it had a nice little OLED screen and a nice little case. But I actually had a look around on eBay, and there were some other options out there. So this is the one I went with. Let's take a closer look at this one on the bench. No, I can't say that. That's Adrian's thing. All right, so this is it. And as you can tell, it is quite compact. It's got two ZIF sockets. So there's one for the 4 to 16 kilobit. And then there's another one for the 32 to 256. Now, the reason for that is because the smaller RAM chips require a minus 5 and a plus 12, along with your standard plus 5 volts. Whereas bigger ones just require the plus five, so you can't have one socket for all. That's not a problem. It's pretty clearly labeled. Um, some RAM chips, it can be tricky to tell what they actually are, but usually a quick Google search of the part number will tell you what it actually is. So let's plug it in. Now, one of the neat things is it's just got a micro USB connector. So you don't need anything fancy, just a standard micro USB cable. And this is what it looks like when you have it turned on. So we've got four different color status LEDs just indicating that it's receiving power. These will actually change when we start testing RAM chips. So they're used as sort of a status indicator of what's going on. Now it does come with a pretty decent manual. I actually took that manual and squeezed it down to three pages because it was spread out over five pages. So I just done a little bit of editing just so I could save some paper and so I don't have to keep track of too many pages. But it is pretty self-explanatory and the USB cable is trying to run away. Let's fix that up a little bit. So when you receive this kit, it is already pre-built. Now, I don't know the seller of these personally. Um, I just, like I said, saw it on eBay and thought it was a good deal. So I decided to give it a try. So let's see how it performs when testing some RAM chips. But before I do that, one thing I do want to check is whether we've got our voltages actually sitting on these pins before we start testing. As I said, these ones require a plus 12 and a minus five volts. So I'm curious to know if that's already sitting there before we start the tests. Now, this is also testing my memory, actually. The instructions have it laid out here. So our ground is on pin 16 and pin one here should give us minus five. At the moment, it's saying 0.2. That doesn't really mean much. Oh yeah. So we can see that it does go to minus five only when the button is pushed and it looks like there's a little bit of residual current left over, probably from the little capacitors on the board, but that, that wouldn't be enough to damage something, um, say if you put it in the wrong way. And there we can see 12.3 and on the other pin, 4.9. So. It's only sending voltage to this when we actually push the button. Um, obviously, if it detects a RAM IC, I imagine that voltage is gonna stay there, otherwise the test wouldn't work. So, let's have a look at some, let's test out some 16 kilobit RAM first. Um, so, 
if you were to accidentally put it in the wrong way, or maybe you just put half the pins in there, um, I guess it's good that the voltage isn't sitting there while you're trying to insert the chip. So this is 4116, which is a one bit, 16 kilobit RAM chip. Uh, let's push the button. And what we can see is there are some flashing lights and then eventually everything turns blue. Now, like I said, on the instructions that actually tells you what this means. So it means that we've got four blocks of four kilobit and they've all tested good. There is also sort of a little cheat sheet along here, which gives you an idea of uh, what's good and what's bad. Let's have a look at something a little bit bigger. Um, maybe we should go with some of these 256 kilobit ones. So these are excess ones that I had from the Atari upgrade. So we'll stick it in this socket, push the button. So what's happening is, according to the instructions, it's writing a bunch of zeros and then writing a bunch of ones, obviously reading these things back as it goes. Then it does some random numbers and then it does the same tests again, but it actually delays uh, the read and write cycles. So because DRAM needs to be constantly refreshed, um, the longer you leave it between those cycles, the more likely you are to lose the actual data that's supposed to be stored in there. So even though some RAM chips can test good when you first check them out on a quick cycle, um, doing this longer test may actually reveal something is not quite right. So seeing as this is the 256 kilobit size, obviously it takes quite a bit longer than the 16 kilobit that we just tested. But at some point, I think it actually specifies in the documents how long you should expect each one to take. About 63 seconds, apparently, for the 256. So now we've got a bunch of purple or magenta lights. So it's indicating that we've got four good um, blocks of 64K. So that's kind of cool. Um, Likewise, of course, the 4164 RAM, which normally I'd test in the ZIF socketed Commodore 64. Um, but this is obviously a lot more accurate. It's going to give you a better idea earlier on before you start chasing things that aren't actually causing the fault. So I'd much rather have something to test these RAM chips before I actually go throwing them in a computer and then spending forever chasing my tail. So we've got four green lights, which indicates our four blocks of good 16K. Let's bring out something that I know is faulty. So this is a bad 4164. So that's 64K likely from a Commodore 64. Okay, so the lights turned red and then instantly turned off. So apparently it does have almost like a soft fuse. So if there's a short with the actual RAM I see, uh, it'll stop providing power and instantly shut off. Um, it does still work for the next test. So if we were to throw in a working one, let's not do the really long one again. Let's go with that. And there we go, we're back into regular tests. So you don't have to power it off or anything. Um, all it's doing is stopping any current supply when it detects a short. This one here is another 4164. Let's see if we can find one that half works. No, nope, that one is instantly busted. That one is also busted. Um, maybe what I'll do, uh, seeing as I've got some unknown RAM chips, new old stock to test. Uh, I might go through these and I'll see if I can find one that half works and we'll see what the, see what it looks like in our little tester. So um, let's hit that fast forward button.
right, so after all that testing, I only found two 4164 RAM chips and both of them immediately failed. So it was a little bit uneventful. I would have liked to have found one that partially works or at least works long enough to trick the tester, but maybe the test is too good. Maybe my RAM is too bad. Um, now, there are other ICs that this can test. Uh, obviously, I've only checked it out on some 16 kilobit, 64 and 256, um, but it does obviously test a lot of other uh, one bit DRAM ICs but uh, I don't have any of those on hand to test. Now, one thing that it won't do, of course, is test four kilobit DRAM, such as the 41464, which is used in the shortboard Commodore 64s, and also the 250466. There's two extra pins for addressing, so obviously they wouldn't even fit in the socket. I do believe when I looked on eBay this morning that Simon here also sells what a tester for four kilobit. Maybe it would be good to have an all in one tester rather than buying this one and then buying another one. But I don't use the four kilobit ones that often. Um, so it's not such a big deal. Uh, the other thing that I fear come across fairly often that's broken is the 2114, but these are SRAM chips. And once again, this is not designed to test those. So testing of the 2114 SRAM will be still a job for the ZIF socketed Commodore 64. So all in all, I'm pretty happy with this thing. Uh, it does what it says on the tin and you don't have to build it. I mean, building some of these things can be fun, but sometimes you just want something that just works. There was a similar one on eBay, which actually was more expensive, uh, that did the same sort of tests, but the LEDs on that one didn't seem to be as intuitive and I'm pretty sure it ran off nine volts. So this one was very reasonably priced. Um, and there are other options out there too, like uh, Evie from Backbit does uh, a chip tester but that's more aimed at a lot of Commodore 64 stuff. And because I've already got the ZIF 64, it's really not something that I'm gonna have much use for. Not to say that it's a bad product. I mean, it's pretty much the only thing apart from an actual Commodore 64 that can test pretty much all the chips that are in a Commodore 64. But for a DRAM tester, I think this is definitely the one to get. Now, there is also a retro chip tester, which is a massive thing that you have to build yourself, which I imagine would take a few hours to build for a lot of components, but that can also test a lot of different ICs. DRAM, SRAM, I think it can be even adapted to test like SIMs um, and PROMs and EPROMs. Now I've got the mini pro programmer which can actually test um, your basic 74 logic. And I guess you can also test it, use it to test EPROMs and PROMs and things like that. So these two together is pretty much enough for me along with the ZIF 64, which uh, I can't shut up about. So I think we'll leave this one here. Uh, a big thanks to patron Tron Magnum for suggesting I look into DRAM testers. And thanks to my Commander Keen patrons that you'll see up on the screen here. Uh, if you want to become a patron, links are down in the description. You'll get early ad free access along with a bunch of other benefits. And thank you all for subscribing, liking, commenting, all that kind of thing. I will catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.